In our previous video, we saw how to set up an authorization server using the minimal configuration and went ahead to create a registered client instance which we stored inside of our in-memory registered client repository. Now this client instance that we defined, we set the settings to not require proof key. So we are supposed to ensure that our client is who it says it is, okay? That is the very first instance. There are a couple of parameters or variable that should be included in our request as query parameters. But because our required proof key has been set to false, those parameters were not included. Now for demonstration purpose, I've already included all of those inside of my notepad editor and saved it inside of a file. So I'll point it out. So we have the first instance for our first registered client because I'm going to be registering another client with a redirect URL at port 8082. Okay, so just take note of that. But for our first instance at 8081, when we send in our initial request for our user to get authenticated, these are the different parameters that we passed in as um, value. So we start with the response type. We passed in our client ID. We passed in our redirect URL I at 8081. And we also passed in our scope. So these are only the parameters we passed in. However, for the case whereby proof key is enabled and it's really needed for verification, we also have to pass in two extra parameters. And the first one is simply what is known as the code challenge or challenge for short. But we have to include it like this when we are sending the request at first. And then we also have to pass, we also have to pass the code challenge method. Now S256 simply stands for SHA. 256 it's basically the algorithm that was used to hash a particular string variable or a byte form that generates this our challenge so when the request at first is being made with all of this parameter the authorization server is going to take this this ones and save it at first okay it's going to save the code challenge and it's also going to save the method that was used in generating it. Now when the access code is being returned back to the client and a request from the client is being made with that access code to get an access token. This time around the client has to include include what is known as the verifier which is this okay we have we now have the code verifier. Now with this code verifier the authorization server would be able to generate a new challenge and basically just check if that challenge is equal to the initial challenge that was sent along the first request for authenticating the user. But then again, it also has to make use of the method that was used in generating the first um, challenge. So basically just um, use the SHA-256 again to provide an hash value for this uh, code verifier and checks if it is equal to the initial challenge. So just take note of that. Now for us to start implementation of this, let us move back to our code editor, which is IntelliJ. So right here, what we just need to do now is just define a new registered client. So the, the variables or the particular settings are still similar. So I'll just um, highlight all of this. Control C and I'll paste it right here. And instead of registered client, since we already have a variable with that name, it should be registered client one. And client already has an ID previously, so this should be clients underscore one. And the secret should be secret underscore one as well. Now for our redirect URL, I want to set it at localhost 8082. And open ID is okay. And uh, I'll just have to tap this once a little bit in and the same applies to what we have here. Okay. 
okay so with this we will now have to change the value from false to true so this time around it requires a proof key and finally we have to save this defined registered client so this should be registered client one so by default what we defined here is an authorization code grant flow but prior to this moment it was known as the implicit grant flow type without any proof an attacker met um, intercepts the request and gets details from that particular request but then again with challenge being harsh it will pretty much be difficult for that intercept to occur and even if the intercept occurs the details will not be easily gotten okay so that's for the case of our register client now by default we are supposed to generate these values such as the code challenge and the code challenge verifier from a client's application when i say a client's application i mean application that may be built using react angular or any front-end framework and then we can look at mobile apps as well so this should be generated from those views okay but then again we don't have a client we are using for this application at the moment so what we want to do now is generate this client sorry generate this challenge directly from our code in order for us to do that i'll be defining the first variable i need just one single variable and that should be logger so i'll be able to log the challenge as well as its verifier to the console so this should be private final and logger logger factory from slf4j so i'll have to import that as well dot get logger and then i'll pass in our class it should be app config dot class and that is just it and now we have to implement our command land runner so that this challenge and its verifier would be generated at runtime so this should be implement and we say command land runner and now let's provide implementation for the run method so to generate our verifier at first before the challenge we need an instance of byte array and this should simply be called code is equal to new byte and 32 as its length now we have to feed this our code array with random values so to do that we make use of new secure random dot next byte and we'll pass in the code so that's just it and now we have to generate our verifier so this should be a string simply say verifier and this is equal to base 64 dot get url encoder dot without padding and dot encode to string while we pass in our code as the value so this is just our verifier for now now to get our challenge we have to hash this verifier so let's go ahead and hash the verifier so to hash the verifier we ought to at first get a byte which should be byte and this should be digested verifier and this should be a type of array okay and this should now be message digest dot di sorry get instance here we have to specify the algorithm that will be used which is sha-256 and basically we want to digest our verifier okay not just verifier but um we have to get the byte of our verifier so that's just it and um finally we want to generate our code challenge so this should be 
string code challenge is equal to once again the all of this control c i'll paste it here and in place of code this time around we have our digested verifier and so we've pretty much generated these two values so i'll just um, close my file tree to ensure you get a proper view of everything so we are generating our verifier with um our base 64 without padding and encoding our byte to string and we are getting a digested byte from our verifier using the message digest.get instance we are specifying the algorithm as well as making use of the digest method of this instance then we are getting our code challenge using the same the same um, logic we used in generating the verifier but this time around we are getting it with the use of a digested verifier okay that's pretty much it has been hashed in a way so we have to log out these two values to the console so we say log out dot info and the first thing should be challenge verifier have to concatenate with our verifier and logout.info now challenge or perhaps code challenge and I'll correct this to code challenge verifier in the colon then we have our code challenge so with these configurations we are good to go so right now i just want to check one more time to ensure that uh, um not going to have any error of search so okay we are good to go so now i'm going to run the application So right now we have our application properly started and when we take a close look at what we have in the log we discover that we now have this extra log code challenge verifier and the code challenge as well so what we need at first is our code challenge so i'm going to be highlighting you all of this and i'll just um, copy it i'll move back to my notepad editor and since it's with proof key I'm going to be using this one at first sorry second um after i make a call to our authentication endpoint with this initial one so let's see what's going to be the response from our server if we fail to provide the code challenge so i just do um, highlight and copy and back to my browser i want to simply paste this url and send So by default, we are supposed to get in the login page where our user is practically going to get authenticated. But this time around, we're having slash error and invalid request saying the error description is simply parameter code challenge not available. So simply because our specified redirect URL is a client that has been registered to require the proof key. Now for us to get rid of this, we have to make a call using this second one that has been specified with the challenge as well as its method. So I'll simply just control C and back to my browser. I'll paste it right here and then I'll send. So this time around we are presented with the login page to sign in. So I'll just provide the necessary values starting with IO codes as the Registered user username and then we pass in our password and then all we have to do is simply sign in. Now we have the code sent back. So I'm going to take the whole of this code again. Control C and back to notepad. I'll still 
highlight the whole of this and then i will simply paste it now take note that we now have to send in our code verifier alongside this curl request in order for us to get the access token but this is and this is um, a code verifier that is pretty much not the verifier for this particular code challenge now this would resolve in will result in an error because the verifier will not be able to generate this particular value for the code challenge so i'll simply just make a request to this url so you get a proper understanding of what i'm trying to pass through to you so i'll just copy the whole of this and right here inside of git bash i'll simply paste it and send now we have an error that states invalid grant as a result of our code verifier not being correct and we know that our our access code can only be used once so we have to generate a new access code okay so move back to my notepad editor and i'll copy the whole of this Control c and um because i've authenticated prior to this moment what will just be returned would be a redirect with my access code so i'm going to take this new access code again Control c and back to notepad i just want to paste this value right yeah and i'll simply delete this ones which is the old code verifier and to my code editor i'll want to make use of this particular new generated code verifier Control c for that and back to notepad i'll simply just paste in this verifier and then i'll practically highlight the whole of this Control c and then at first i want to pretty much clear everything off my bash terminal and then paste this new code now when i send we now have our access token back so you see the kind of extra security layer that the proof key enables for us okay so with the proof key we the authorization server is only is able to validate that the user is who it says it is so with that we have come to the end of the proof key for code exchange in an authorization server i'd love to see you in the next one we'll be looking at opaque tokens and introspect and after that we are going to be looking at how to persist our registered client directly from a database instead of having to add code each and every new registered client we plan to use with our authorization server peace out i remain i and until the next one keep being your best self <laughs>